The photoelectric effect, that's something that Gary normally struggles with and actually a lot of students struggle because it's something really abstract. Gorilla Physics. So I'm going to charge this zinc plate and I'm going to charge it negatively using this acetate rod here. Now that means that there's loads of extra electrons stuffed onto that zinc plate. You can see the gold leaf is repelling from the central bar there. Now firstly we're going to notice what doesn't happen. I shine an ordinary white light lamp onto the metal plate and you can see nothing at all happens. No matter how long I leave this here, nothing happens at all. Now that's surprising if we model light as a wave because waves are continuous. They transfer their energy continuously. So if we can imagine those electrons bound in their atoms, then the wave would be transferring energy um, to it continuously, raising it up through the energy levels, and eventually it would leave the atom. We don't see it leaving the atom. But when I shine at light of a higher frequency on it, we see it gradually discharging. Now what's happening there is this light has got enough energy to release those en uh, electrons from the zinc atoms. They're released and they become what we call photoelectrons. Now there is a frequency at which that starts to happen. We call that the threshold frequency. So if light were simply a wave, we'd see it continuously transfer its energy to this electron, raising it up and up and up, and eventually it would go. And this would happen with all wavelengths of light. It would just take longer for the lower energy wavelengths, the longer wavelengths and the lower frequencies. We don't see that happen. It never even gets raised up an energy level. But with the UV light, the light of the higher frequency, it has enough for each single photon to interact with a single electron and release it from the atom. So this is a really important graph for us to understand. It says that energy and frequency are related and this energy here is the kinetic energy of those released electrons. We call them once they're released from an atom by light, we call them photoelectrons, a light electron. Okay, it's an electron that's got no special properties other than it's been released by light. It doesn't happen before a certain frequency. We call that the threshold frequency. After that, the kinetic energy of those photoelectrons increases linearly. And this is going to lead me to the experiment that I'm going to conduct, whereby we can actually measure Planck's constant. And in this experiment I'm going to show you, we'll be able to also measure the minimum amount of energy to release an electron from a metal. The photoelectric effect that I've just shown you was the evidence that showed that light wasn't just a wave. It had both wave properties and particle properties. And it's the kind of last bit of the debate that you need to be aware of with the wave particle nature of light. So the photoelectric effect is the last piece of evidence which helps us understand that light isn't just a wave, it doesn't just have wave behaviours, it also has particle behaviours as well. We call light a photon. Photo means light and anything which ends on is a particle. Electron, proton, all that type of thing. So light is a wave particle. Hope that's been useful to you. I'm Kip S. Masters, this is Gorilla Physics. I hope that helped you understand more so that you're gaining confidence, so you can enjoy your physics more, so that you do better in those exams. Thanks a lot for watching.